Douglas, camera's ready down here. Three, two, one. No matter which way you look at it, I really shouldn't be doing this. Skiing professionally in front of cameras is a young person's game. More often than not, it involves performing superhuman feats of athleticism on big jumps and impossibly steep terrain. And since I was 15 years old, it's all I've ever wanted to do. At 47, I'm way past my best before date. In fact, I no longer know anyone who does what I do who's older than me. I've been lucky, really lucky. But despite my best efforts, good fortune, and supportive sponsors, reality has a way of reminding me of my real age. Yeah, might as well document it. It's not every day you get a colonoscopy. I suppose. <laughs> With each passing year, fear creeps a little closer, and the tricks I built my career on slip further away. I was like, shit, I think I'm a bit short. Even my signature trick, the D-spin, has fallen victim. Once I hit my late 30s, I used to try and do at least one a season as a way to prove to myself yeah. that I've still got it. But I'm struggling to even remember the last time I landed one. So on my 47th birthday last year, I started thinking, how much longer can I keep this up? Is there a secret to perpetual youth and longevity? And if there is, can it help me keep this career alive? I needed answers. So I called up my least mature pro skier friends, Alexi Godbu and Stan Ray, and booked tickets to the best place I could think to look. Japan. With nearly 500 ski areas, over 10 million active skiers, and the longest living population of the world's major industrialized countries, Japan seems an obvious choice. There is a resilience here, a willingness to embrace tradition while simultaneously racing the future. With only two weeks in the country, we figured the best place to begin this search is at the nation's highest and oldest ski resort, Shigakogen. Japan is famous for its soft powder snow and moderate terrain, making it the perfect place for expert skiers to age gracefully. As tempting as it is to abandon this project and simply go skiing, I knew the answers were unlikely to be found in the birch forests of Nagano. When it comes to questions about longevity, the first place people point fingers is toward diet. And one quick flick through the TV channels in Japan, and you'll see this is a culture obsessed with food. Just down the road from Shigakogen is a miso shop run by Kazuhiko Sekia, whose family has been making miso paste here in Nagano for over 120 years. The miso shop. This is where they make the miso paste for miso soup. Miso is a soybean-based seasoning high in protein, vitamins, and minerals, and it's a Japanese culinary staple. After a quick tour of the miso fermentation process, one which hasn't changed for over a thousand years, we sampled his product and I asked him, what is it about the local diet that contributes to longevity? Nagano 
お味噌汁とかうんとご飯とかもうそれが主食になってあのお肉も今は食べるようになりましたがやっぱりうんと特に長野県の方っていうのはうんとうんとお野菜を食べる率とはかなり高いと思います。The biggest surprise for me was not a single mention of fish, but Sekia san was quick to remind me seafood is a treat, not a staple food. Well, lots of vegetables and not processed.、Mm-hmm. Lots of raw vegetables, just pickled. And... Where'd it go? I think that's part of the secret, man. The bamboo? Well, just staying away from all the processed crap. Yeah. You know? As a part time vegetarian with full time aspirations, all this comes as good news. At least I seem to be trending in the right direction. The second major component cited for longevity is exercise and flexibility. I'm okay with physical activity, but when your body's wound up tighter than a banjo string, flexibility is an exercise in pain management. The fact is, I don't like it, and more often than not, a yoga session prematurely finishes like this. But maybe that's not so bad. Fun is supposed to be a contributor to youthfulness, right? <laughs> Here in the mountains of Japan, people ski and move snow. If there's much more going on than that, it's either happening behind closed doors or I'm completely missing it. Could skiing be enough? I'm not sure. But from what I can tell, no one over here is taking this fitness thing too seriously. And with close to a meter of fresh snow on the ground, neither were we. In the last year or two, and some of my tricks haven't been done for a little while. So, one of the goals on this trip was to kind of try and bring some of those tricks back. So, we'll see how it goes. Although, this isn't going to be the jump for it. <laughs> While small backflips and 360s are fine, they're just stepping stones to what I'm really after. What I want to do is another D spin. It's an inverted 720 in my signature trick. It's something I haven't done for four years. My last attempt from a trip to Japan two years ago doesn't exactly inspire confidence. If I don't get one on this trip, it's likely gone forever. It's not necessarily a career ender, but mentally for me, it's a major component for maintaining my youth into old age and justifying my role in this profession.
With weary legs, we continued the search and made our way to a ryokan in the ancient hot spring town of Shibu Onsen. The healing powers of hot springs, or onsens as they are called in Japan, have been recognized here for over 1300 years. And this old girl looks like she's been here since day one. They've become so popular that cities are literally built around them, and there are now more than 3,000 developed springs on these volcanic islands. Could this be the key to longevity? So I'm learning on this trip that not all onsens are created equal. In this particular onsen hotel, we've got six different baths. And in this room, we've got five different tubs, each one coming from a different source, having different mineral content, different acidity, different heat. And ultimately, all of them are supposed to heal different parts of your body. They all feel pretty good to me. An elixir for tired muscles? Probably. A respite from an increasingly busy world? Definitely. But the secret to keeping a pro skiing career alive well past its prime? Doubtful. I'm not sure how much faith I'm willing to put in luck as I push forward, but I have to admit, it's tough to explain some of the close calls I've had without it. So when journalist friend Tatsuya Tayagaki offered to take me to the Senkoji Buddhist temple in Nagano to have my fortune read, how could I say no? Got a fortune. It's a red bull. Red bull. <laughs> <laughs> so. This is uh, not just fortune. This is uh, for your future. God telling your future what's happened for your future. Okay. So, so it could be good and it could be bad. Yeah, but uh, good is good, but uh, bad, it's not meaning everything bad. Yeah. You should do something is in here. Okay. Yeah. So if it's bad or yeah. not good, yeah. it's... It's not competing, a, yeah. Yeah, it's giving you a, a way to find a way to be better. Yes. Okay, yes. okay, okay. I could definitely use some ways to be better. Yeah. You should just ask my wife. She'll tell you. So what does mine say? This says you have a lot of dream okay. and uh, your wishes and uh, it's so big. But you need to do step by step. Right. Yeah. So I need to be, yeah, I have to plan step by step. Yes. Okay, yeah. good. Left hand, yeah. washing. While not a particularly religious people, the majority of Japanese identify themselves as either Buddhist or Shinto. And there's no shortage of locals willing to walk through the cleansing process before making a silent plea to Buddha for a bright future. Yeah. And one more. And now, if yeah. I do everything right, yeah. I should have some Perfect. good luck. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a tendency to rush into things and an inclination to process deep thoughts on the skin track, the step-by-step -step path to success may have been the best piece of advice I'd been given so far. Much of what I've learned has been informative, but I wouldn't exactly call it profound. This stuff may help me extend my life, but will any of it help me really live? The warmth of spring had arrived in Nagano, turning what was left of the powder into miso paste. It was time to take this search up a notch, so I called up my old friends Yuchiro and Gota Miura and jumped on a Shinkansen bound for Tokyo. Oh, uh, 
Chirosada. Good to see you. If the Mira name sounds familiar, it should be. Yuchiro rose to global fame in 1975 as the man who skied down Everest, from the Academy Award-winning film of the same name. Since then, he's gone on to become arguably the most badass old dude on the planet. He holds the Guinness World Record as the oldest person to summit Mount Everest, a feat he's pulled off three times, most recently in 2013 at 80 years old. Now at 84, he still skis 100 days a year, and is planning to ski from the summit of Choyu, the world's sixth highest mountain, next year at 85. Uchiro's father Keizo, a Japanese skiing pioneer, lived until 101 and was still logging 100 plus day ski seasons until the end, including a descent from Chamonix famed Agui de Midi at age 99. Hey, hey, hi. How, How are you? Buddy? Oh, good, good. Welcome to Japan! Thanks, yeah. Uchiro's son Goda is no slouch either. After a solid career on the Japanese Olympic ski team, Goda accompanied his father to the summit of several of the world's highest peaks, including Everest. Now at 47, and with a doctorate in microbiology and anti-aging, he's certainly the most qualified person I've met when it comes to the subject matter. So Goda, I always assumed that the mirrors are like some kind of genetic mutant family like with superpowers. Well, I have done my study on anti-aging. I've done study on my father and my grandfather down to genetic level. Turns out they are completely normal, just like you and me. In fact, my father had to overcome many obstacles before he climbed Mount Everest, such as hot erythmia and broken pelvis even. Wow. Well, there goes that theory. Maybe we actually can learn something from the mirrors. The second assumption I made is that Uchiro spends all day in the gym training. So I asked him what he does to stay in such good shape. まあ、非常に多分な。しかしエキサイティングで面白くて勝つまた物すごくまあハードな想像以上のハードな運動だと思いますけど、これが健康の大きな元になるのかなと。Does he do like weight training? She doesn't she doesn't do any weight training. He just skis. He just skis. All day long. Well, that's cool. Does the science back up? Yes. All the stuff? Yes. Really? Um, secret to uh, longevity is having strong lower body. Really? Yes. So if you lose the legs, mm -hmm. it's all down there, downhill from there. So skiing obviously is, mm -hmm. is, a, is a great sport for that. Of course. So this is a bone density of my dad on the Caucasus. Um, he was 69 years old, 70 years old, 75. Um, is this is this when he was injured? Yeah. Uh, this is is when he was injured. His bone density got a little lower because he was limited uh, his physical activity at mm. that, at this time. But it bounces back at the age of eighty, and this is twenty year old line. Wow! So his bone density is actually as young as twenty years old. Incredible. What skin is so good for is that the pressure comes gradually to the bone, not the impact. Right, it's right, a, right. It's a, like a marathon. It spikes up to eight times of your body weight, but that actually kills your bone. Skiing, it's gradual amount of stimulation, yeah. stimuli right. in the bone tells bones to be strong and not break down. So skiing helps keep you young. Yes, if you're skiing, even from young, young people to old people, uh, I have done a study, they have strong, strongest bone density of any other sports. Really? Mm. Yes. That is good news, my friend. <laughs> awesome. Uchira's off-season fitness routine consists of hiking in the mountains when he can, but most often he just hits the streets of Tokyo running errands, wearing his custom-made weighted shoes and a 20-kilogram backpack. 
In the time I spent with the Muras, they affirmed I was on the right track. Exercise is key, despite Uchiro hating stretching even more than I do. Onsens are great for recovery, when used in moderation. And luck is nice, but Uchiro reminded me not to rely on it. Diet was a bit of a surprise, however. While Uchiro eats the typical Japanese diet, he also regularly eats meat. Go to back this up saying meat should be part of your regular diet after 60, citing that higher cholesterol levels are linked to strength and longevity in older people. Before moving on, I wanted one more piece of wisdom. If anyone was able to tell me the secret to keeping my pro ski career going into old age, it was Uchiro. もう最初はもう本当に100メートル歩くのもしんどいと。しかしそれでも諦めないで、僕の場合は足を盛り背中にザクと。これをつけて少しずつ少しずつということから足腰が鍛えられる。そしてとうとうエベレストに登れると。Oddly enough, it was while driving into a blinding Hokkaido snowstorm that everything I'd learned on this trip became crystal clear. Nearly all I'd assumed before embarking on this search was completely wrong. The answers weren't going to be found in complicated diet formulas, yoga routines, workout regimes, or temples. The answers were simple and had been sitting right in front of me all along. We are building a jump in Japan. Are there any predetermined expectations? Well, we're always talking about the D spin, which is sort of was my signature move back in the day. And I haven't done one for a while, so we'll see if I can, uh, if I can get that back under my belt. I think so. I feel pretty confident. Oh, I think he's still got it. Does he have as much steez as he used to? I don't think so, but. He's 47. Give him a break for crying out loud. He's a little tentative though. I think he might be a little bit scared. It, need, it needs to be filled. They both need to be filled a little bit or shaved. How are you feeling about this, Mike? Ah, oh, jeez. It's because you're nervous. You start getting like OCD. A little antsy. Yeah, I'm definitely a little antsy. A little bit nervous for sure. You're getting a little antsy. I've noticed that last like 10 minutes. Three, two, one, drop in. And just like that, I was 25 again. It may have only lasted for a few hours, but what I've realized on reflection is how this goal had shaped my entire season. <laughs> step by step, I'd been subconsciously working toward this moment for months. Skiing harder, eating better, and recovering smarter. It all seems so obvious now. The goal wasn't an end point. It's just a kick in the ass to get up and seize the day. The secret to perpetual youth and longevity lives in all of us. So get out there and chase life. It might even help you live longer.
Do either of you have any tips or secrets to longevity? 